Using Elm in a practical way means working with existing CSS and JavaScript. So um, in this part of the series, uh, I'm going to be showing you how we can uh, move away from Elm Reactor and actually make real programs uh, by compiling Elm to JavaScript and then uh, embedding that JavaScript, embedding that Elm application wherever we want. Um, so let's hop into our editor uh, and we're going to we're going to move uh, away. I'm going to get a little smaller here um, and we're going to basically um, stop using this Elm Reactor and we're going to just talk about if you have an Elm program like this, uh, this one that we've been working with. How do we get this uh, to work with like an HTML file? Um, so previously we've been using Elm make to just compile directly to HTML. Um, and so like we get this generated HTML file with just a bunch of uh, just like <laughs> garbage in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this HTML file out and I'm going to create a blank one. So this is going to be a brand new HTML text file, uh, my Elm app. Um, I'm going to have a div. Uh, that's going to have ID app, and this is going to be where I'm going to put my uh, Elm application. That's where it's going to uh, start up. Um, so what I want to do is I want to add a script tag, um, and then I'm going to have a uh, compiled .elm.js file. It doesn't have to be .elm.js. Um, we can just uh, call it elm.js if we want, uh, and then we're going to have in here, we're going to start our Elm program. Um, so all I've done is I've made a blank HTML file. Uh, I'm assuming that there's going to be this elm.js. Um, maybe we put that in a dist folder or something like that. So how do we take elm and how do we compile that to JavaScript? Uh, the way we can do that is we can use elm make, uh, but rather than um, uh, just saying dash dash debug or dash dash optimize, we can um, let it know where we want um, our compiled program to go. So by adding this output flag, uh, we're going to be able to compile our app to JavaScript. And by doing that, um, we have access to this uh, non-minified JavaScript file, um, and it's uh, available right here. So all we have to do to get our app running is call elm.main.init. Uh, Elm is going to be globally available as soon as you run this. Main is going to be the name of the module that we compiled. And then init is the function that's going to start up our app. It's going to return that new app. Uh, and then all we have to do is specify what node do we want to inject the Elm app into. So document.getElementById app will tell our Elm program, hey, I want you to initialize and I want you to insert yourself inside of the uh, element with ID app. Uh, so I'm going to save this and all I'm going to do is run open index.html and boom, that's it. Um, this is, uh, it looks a lot like what we had before, uh, but the benefit is now that we have compiled on the JavaScript, we can add um, CSS, we can add link tags. Um, so here I'm going to just add a new file, style.css, um, and let's, uh, let's make this dark mode friendly. Let's make uh, our HTML have background um, 333 and color white and let's make uh, let's make this whole page dark boom so now we're using CSS uh, we still have all the, the functionality that we had before we're doing that crazy thing where we're re-rolling uh, <laughs> rolling numbers three times where we start from our last video um, but this is an LMAP and we can um, do all kinds of stuff here uh, body um, let's uh, add some the serif font stack or the sans serif font stack here. This is what GitHub uses, uh, so we're not using that that serif font anymore. Um, but in summary, all we're doing is we are picking an entry point here, main.elm, and because we're using uh, the main module and because the main module is exposing uh, the main function, what it's going to do is it is going to take this program uh, that we exposed here with browser.element it's going to compile that into elm.js and then all we need to do is um, pick a node, uh, define a node that it should render into, import that script tag, and then again we're going to start our elm program here. Um, if our main.elm file was called banana.elm, this would be elm.banana.init. Uh, but this is the basic setup. Um, we've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
Uh, this is great and everything, but when I make a typo um, and I refresh, uh, this doesn't even um, use uh, my latest Elm code. So in the next video, we're going to have a little bit more modern of a setup. Uh, we're going to be using Vite, and we're going to see how we can set up an Elm application uh, so that every time we save a file, we instantly can see um, the change in the browser, and we can even get those really nice Elm error messages uh, with each, uh, each save. So uh, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.